Hello, this is an introduction to the horizontal asymptotes. And basically what I mean is like when you have a polynomial graph, uh, you know, like this bad boy right here. I don't know what this graph looks like. Actually, maybe I'll graph it later. But uh, a horizontal asymptote basically means that there's a spot on the graph where, you know, the graph will never touch. I mean, it'll approach it, but it won't, you know, touch it. That's a, well, that's a vertical asymptote. Hopefully I didn't say that was a horizontal asymptote. That's a vertical asymptote. Well, a horizontal asymptote is the same thing, except instead of, you know, not approaching it like up and down, what it does is it not approaches it side to side. So, let's say, you know, this graph is getting ever and ever and ever and ever closer to this line, but it never touches it. That's a horizontal asymptote. And I'm going to give you a very quick uh, synopsis on horizontal asymptotes in general. And here's what you basically have to know. If the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, then the horizontal asymptote of this particular problem is zero. And uh, the way to think about that is very simple. All you do is you divide by the highest degree of uh, the problem. You know, this one has a degree of one, this one has a degree of two. Let me repeat that again. Since the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, it has a uh, horizontal asymptote of zero. That's always the case. Now, if the numerator has a lower degree than the denominator, bam, that's it. Uh, for an explanation that warrants it, all you really do is this. You, you divide each term by the highest degree, and the highest degree in this problem is x squared. So 3x minus 1 over x squared minus x minus 6. Divide each term by the highest degree, x squared, And basically what you do is you suppose that x approaches uh, infinity, or negative infinity, I guess, for that matter, too. But you assume x approaches infinity. So what happens is, if, if you assume that x is getting larger and larger and larger and larger, because that's what a horizontal asymptote does, it either goes that way or it goes that way. So it either approaches, uh, let's see, my direction, infinity or negative infinity. Well, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, what happens to this number here? It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And people say, that, that's not true. Okay, 1 divided by 1 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 0. 0.5. 1 divided by 10 is 0. 0.10. 1 divided by 100 is 0. 0.01. Basically what happens is, as your denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, your value actually gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is 0, subtracted by 0, over x squared divided by x squared is 1, x over x squared, your denominator is getting much bigger than your numerator, to say the least, that value is 0, subtracted by 0. So you got 0 over 1, which equals 0. Bam! That's your horizontal asymptote. As you approach either infinity or negative infinity, that's all there is. And you actually do apply this in calculus to an extent, which is awesome, because if you learn it now, then you're like, I'm ready at least for that aspect of it. So, to summarize that, if the degree of your numerator is less than the degree of your denominator, you have a horizontal asymptote at zero. I'm going to go ahead and erase this now. Now that brings up a few other questions. Well, okay, if the numerator is smaller than the denominator, it's zero. What happens when they're the same? Well, what you do in this case is you still divide by the highest degree, and the highest degree is x squared. And we're going to divide each term by x squared. And basically what that does is it allows us to see where the graph is going as we approach infinity or negative infinity. Now what happens here is 5x squared over x squared is 5. 1 over x squared is 0 as x approaches. 3x squared over x squared is 3 minus 0. The horizontal asymptote in this case is 5 thirds. Well, okay, that's not bad. So if it's smaller, if, it, if the degree of the numerator is smaller than the degree of the denominator, horizontal asymptote is zero? Yep. Yeah. Uh, if the degrees are the same, and I divide by x squared, or you know, w squared, or whatever variable I'm using, and then basically whatever uh, that, that you know, constant turns out to is the horizontal asymptote? Gotcha. Uh, what happens if it's bigger? Well, there's a little bit of a stipulation behind that. If the numerator is bigger than the denominator in terms of degree, then there is no horizontal asymptote unless, 
unless, well actually there is no horizontal asymptote no matter what. Uh, however, there is a stipulation. If the degree of the numerator is bigger than the degree of the denominator by one, then there's something called an oblique, I call them slant, but they call them oblique asymptotes. Uh, in this case, the degree is two bigger than the denominator. This is x to the fourth, x to the squared. You know, four is two bigger than two. If this were a three and this were a two, then you would have something called an oblique asymptote, which I'll talk about. Not now, though. But if you're bigger than any other degree from one, like if you're two degrees bigger, or three degrees bigger, or four degrees, or five degrees, or whatever, there is no horizontal asymptote. So, that's my brief introduction. I'll go ahead and try doing this one uh, without the aid of a graphing calculator because I'm prideful. Hopefully I'll get it right. I think that'd be a good one. And I'll show you like kind of strategies on how to do it. It's, it's a lost art in its own right. But we'll see. Maybe we can do it. And you can check it on your own graphing calculator if you want to. Hopefully I won't butcher it too much, but you never know. Uh, with that said, have a good day for now. Goodbye.